What's up, Internet? We are here with a big mystery box of mysteries. Woo, jazz hands. Um, okay, so this box arrived on my doorstep today on the 10th of February, my 30th birthday. Wow, I'm so incredibly old. Um, and, and you know, this is just a big box of mysteries, so I thought I'd show it to you. But I don't know what's in this. But I do, but I don't. But I do, like I said, it's a box of mystery, but we'll go with a little bit of preamble here. So, and you'll have to excuse me on the timeline of this exactly, because, you know, I got the memory of a goldfish, but I think this started about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. I was doing a video like this, just a nice little loot video, and I had uh, showed off some interesting PS1 imports I had received, and there was like this one game, it, it was like this like no name game I got for a single dollar and uh, you know I, I got a message on that video by this awesome user JetWolf68k uh, shout outs to JetWolf uh, I'll leave a link in the description go check out his channel and give a big thanks for me because he sent this to the show he was talking about how the game had like this really really cool sequel and the, how the game itself was really good but the sequel was like the, everything the game was but better in every single way and I looked up the sequel, and it actually did look pretty cool, except whereas it was like, the original was like a $1 game I got just because, you know, I, I was filling out an eBay order, why not add an extra game for a dollar. Uh, the sequel was about 20 to 30, so it, it was a little bit more expensive. Um, so fast forward about a year and a half to November of 2020. Uh, I got a new message on that thread he mentioned. And he said, hey man, uh, I, I'm looking to sell my game. I don't know if you're interested, but I've got it up on eBay for super cheap. No one's buying it. Uh, would you be interested? And uh, of course, I said yes, because I'm interested in interesting things. I, I love all games as an archivist. And you know, I, if it's cheap and I can afford it, sure. I, I checked out his page and he did have it for super, super cheap. I believe he was selling it for like $2.50. But there was something we didn't take into account, and that is, I'm not in America. I'm in Canada, sometimes referred to as America's hat. And unfortunately, free shipping from America on eBay means that I end up paying about $30 shipping and then like a $15 import fee from eBay for some reason. Uh, unfortunately, it was just too expensive to justify that one game, even though it was at such a good cost. But the thing is, I am... A person of my word. So when I say I'm interested in something and I'd like to buy something, I do everything in my power to, you know, see it through because I, I hold my word to be very, very important to me. And it got to the point where I was literally looking at his eBay page and looking at like everything he was selling and I was thinking, okay, maybe if I bought literally everything he was selling, I could get a bundle that might make up the cost in some way, shape, or form, but it, it really just couldn't and I was sad about that. Uh, so I had to go back to him and I had to explain, like, look, man, with with the shipping and the import fees, I, I just can't justify one PS1 game. Um, so flash forward another week or so, and he comes back to me through an email thread because it, it makes more sense to contact me about this sort of thing through email than just continuing a thread from two years ago. And he's like, well, I just want to get rid of it. Like, I, I don't care if I make money. Clearly no one's buying it. I just want to get rid of it, and you seem interested. So if you're okay with waiting a little while because, like you said, shipping's a little pricey, I will just, you know, send it to the show and donate it. And I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. If, if you could do that, that would be awesome because, you know, I, I really appreciate any donations I get because this show is uh, pretty much everything I'm putting everything I have into. So any way I can cut costs is uh, definitely, definitely appreciated. <laughs> Go check out my Patreon. Anyway, you know, uh, so... We, we kind of had this sort of agreement, and I didn't hear anything back from him for a while, and it was just like, ah, well, maybe he managed to sell it or something. Uh, so, flash forward again to January 2021, and uh, he, he hits me with another email, he's like, okay, uh, your box is almost ready, it's still coming, don't worry about that, don't worry about that, but would you be weirded out if I sent you something a little bit more, you know, like, higher tier, more, more interesting as well, or would that weird you out, would you prefer something a little bit more expensive maybe be sent to you from your like friends or family or, or whatever for a birthday present or something and uh, again I, I need as much support as I possibly can get so I can't really turn him down or anything uh, but I don't have the way to just ignore that I, I really do need any amount of support and I do value it more than I could ever put words to 
again, go check out the Patreon. But, uh, you know, I, I just said, look, I, I would appreciate anything you could do for me. Just, you know, don't break the bank. Make sure you can, like, afford food. Don't, you know, focus on sending me stuff so much that you're putting yourself in detriment or something like that, because that would be silly. And uh, he, he said, all right, all right. But I, I tried to assuade his fears, and I'm like, well, you know, if it helps you sleep better, um, I don't have many friends. The ones I do don't really pay attention to my birthday too much. Uh, my family's not supportive of what I do, and my 30th birthday is coming up. So, you know, some things kind of line up there so that, you know, if, if that helps you justify what you're doing a little better, there, there that is. Um, so, flash forward to my birthday, February 10th, 2021. God, I'm old. <laughs> and uh, this box came. And I know what one thing is in this game. One thing is the sequel to the game we talked about. That's in here. I mean, I assume. I haven't looked in here yet. Um, and I saw the manifest on this. It said that there were four computer slash video game carts and four audio CDs. Which I'm guessing audio CDs might be PlayStation games. I, I'm guessing that uh, customs messed up or something. But, you know, either way, there should be like eight games in here. Uh, I've opened the box. There was a lot of bubble wrap. I did not look inside. I had someone else unwrap and put everything back in here that uh, they could in the order they found it. So I actually don't know what's in here. And uh, I'm going to take this off. We're going to look at everything one at a time. And I'm not even going to look at what I pick. I'm going to try and uh, mix it up so like CD meets uh, cartridge meets CD meets cartridge back and forth and we'll see what we get. But uh, I'm pulling out the first thing and we have... Holy shit. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, I, I may have found like the big ticket item. <laughs> um, so, so some story about me. Um, if this is the first time you've ever come to my channel, first of all, hello. Uh, second of all, I really like the Sega Saturn. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of my favorite console of all time. I know that's a bit of a hot take. That might be a weird thing to, for a lot of people to hear. I really, really like the Sega Saturn. Buying Saturn games domestically is damn near impossible because they're stupidly expensive, which is why I'll probably never see my favorite game, or my favorite game, my most wanted game, uh, good old Panzer Dragoon Saga, the Holy Grail, so to speak. Um, but the Sega Saturn is an amazing console for importing. Now, granted, importing has gotten a lot more expensive over time, which I find concerning, but it has always been sort of like a cheap way to get into it. Case in point, the first time I bought a Japanese import, I bought uh, Saturn Bomberman for like a dollar, and a North American copy would be like 150. So yeah, you save some money. That said, there's always been sort of like an upper echelon of import Saturn games that have always cost a lot of money, like always more than like $100. You've got stuff like Hyper Duel, uh, Tri Rush Depi, there was a... Uh, a tempo game that is ridiculously expensive. I think Willy Wombat's getting up there too, which sucks because I really want to copy that. But I can never justify any of those games as much as I want to play all of them. And the reason is, if you're going to spend $100 on a Saturn game, you're like a quarter of the way to Panzer Dragoon Saga. At least when I started collecting Saturn games seriously, nowadays it's, it's gone up significantly more, so that doesn't hold true as much. But that said, there was always one import game I wanted more than anyone else. And uh, it always sat at on that list of like upper echelon imports that were just a little more expensive. And that game is Bulk Slash. Now Bulk Slash is uh, like this pre-rendered mech 3D arcade shooter type of thing. You play like this mech guy, you turn to like spaceship and you shoot some stuff, you rescue ladies who are operators for you and stuff. I don't know a ton about this game, but I've always wanted it. This has always been my most wanted import. Uh, and, and this was the thing with uh, Jet Wolf when he was sending me stuff was we were, be, because the original concept of uh, the, the first game he wanted to send me was mechs, you know, I, I think he knows that I like mechs a whole lot. And uh, this game, this is a badass mech game I've always wanted and always been turned off by the price. Uh, a few years ago, someone actually did try and sell this to me. Uh, and they said they even give me a good deal, but even at that price, it was still like almost $100. And I, I just could not justify that for a single Saturn game. So to have this in my hands right now, this, uh, I, I'm not even lying, I'm, I'm tearing up right now. This is unbelievably cool, and, and this is very humbling to have someone send me a copy of Bulk Slash.
This this has been something I've always wanted. I'm, I'm shaking right now with both excitement and and just how much I'm blown away that uh, someone would send me this. This is really damn cool. Uh, once again, shoutouts to uh, Jet Wolf and his awesome stuff. Thank you. I'm gonna be thanking you for everything in here. I think. Okay, so we're gonna dig in this box. Not gonna look and pull out our first cartridge and oh snap! Bonk! I love Bonk. Uh, Bonk is awesome. If you don't know Bonk, he was like the mascot of the PC Engine and uh, the non-existent North American equivalent that never happened. Um, I don't have the biggest experience with Bonk, but I do have the kind of rare Bonk Game Boy Collection, and I reviewed the first game back in the day on there. And uh, Bonk is just sort of a standard platformer. You play as this little cave guy named Bonk. His whole thing is he bonks things with his head. And I'm pretty sure this was like the last one in that was ever released. I, I know this was sort of considered typically to be the best Bonk game. It was, in fact, the pinnacle of bonking technology. And unlike the original Super Bonk on the Super Nintendo, this one was never localized. So it's, it's uh, something we never got. But what you didn't know, if you did all know all that, in which case, good on you, Mr. Knowledgeable, is that I've been trying to get this game for a very long time. I've actually tried to buy this game about 40 times. Uh, <laughs> same with uh, Hudson's other number two release on the Super Nintendo Adventure Island 2. I've, I've tried to buy it about 40 different times and every single time someone sniped it from under me. So uh, to have this, oh man, I, I am so excited. This is, this is really damn cool. Uh, once again, thank you, Jet Wolf. This is this is gonna be cool. This is an amazing birthday gift that uh, I don't think was intentionally a birthday gift, but I, I'm definitely calling it a birthday gift because this literally showed up on my birthday and that was really cool. All right, our next disc is oh, that's convenient. I recognize this. This is Guy Brave. Uh, this is Ride Gear Guy Brave. Although Guy Brave is the only English thing. It is a 3D something 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 RPG. This was the game I showed off that kind of instigated all this. He, he told me about the sequel to this, and Ride Gear Guy Brave was this weird little game I got for like a dollar. Again, I added it to my cart just because, you know, it, it's an extra game for a dollar, why not? But it was like a weird RPG meets a 3D beat-em-up with like a chibi mech, and it looked really, really fun for a dollar, and I was like, ah, yeah, all right, cool. I'll, I'll pick this up and I'll play it, and I remember it being really damn good. It's been a while since I played it, though. Uh, because this was this and its sequel were sort of instigating this whole thing, I think I'm gonna have to uh, prioritize a review on these guys. But uh, because this was a donation, I'm gonna replace the one on my shelf with this, and the one on my shelf is gonna go into like a box of duplicates or something for trade later. But uh, really excited to get back into mech beat em up RPG nonsense. This is very, very cool. Um, but like I said, like the sequel, he had a copy and he just wanted to get rid of it, so uh, he sent it my way. And. Uh, that's, that's very cool. That's going to have a happy life on my shelf. Alright, we got the next thing. And I think I know what this is. Um, this is something something Dion. And I, I'm working entirely off my knowledge of Japanese stickers here, so I might be wildly off here. I think this was the game that we got in English as Imperium. And Imperium was this top-down vertical scrolling shmup where you played as like a mech. It, it was sort of kind of like a weak sauce Super Nintendo equivalent to like Musha, so to speak. Um, but this is the Japanese version and that's actually a huge deal because the North American version of uh, Imperium, again, I'm, I'm assuming that's what this is based on my ruddy knowledge, but um, the Japanese version actually got weirdly localized when it was brought to North America as Imperium. Like, they, they just changed all the background sprites from what I remember. Like, the North American first stage had like these, uh, like, th the entire background was like this brown, muddy mess with like some iron girders sticking out, whereas the Japanese version, you were flying over this like n lit up night cityscape that just looked so gorgeous. I've seen screenshots uh, comparing the two, and I think I played this back in the day a little bit. Uh, so this is pretty exciting, and it's the Japanese version, which I think is actually pretty hard to find compared to the North American version. Uh, so that's really, really cool. And either way, pretty sure this is Imperium. And if it is, that also makes it one of the earliest uh, soundtracks composed by Nipponichi composer Tenpei Sato, who has an amazing soundtrack of uh, songs he's created over the years. Uh, Shoutouts to r r Junkie, Speed Queen, Rock and Rocks. I might have to put Rock and Rocks in on the background. <laughs> 
Oh, that's such a good song. Uh, but uh, great soundtrack, really cool game. I, I don't think it's like in the upper tier of shmups or anything, but it's definitely weird that they changed so much about the backgrounds when they localized it. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a really cool thing to have. And, and again, it's a mech game, and I likes me my mechs. I, I'm, I am the biggest fan of Gundam ever. Okay, so that's a cartridge. Time to grab the next disc. And that is, oh, I kind of recognize this too. This is Ride Gear Guybrave the second, except he looks a lot less chibi and more actual mechy. Uh, I'm gonna assume this is the sequel to Ride Gear Guybrave. <laughs> Uh, which means if, if uh, it's anything like the first game, it's gonna be like a 3D beat em up with like RPG elements, and that's good stuff. And it's mechy, and I love mechy stuff. And it's a weird Japanese import. Everything about this is awesome, is, is the short version of this. So, uh, once again, uh, thank you. This is pretty cool. I, I am very excited to check these out. I think if I'm gonna review any of these, as much as I really, 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 really want to play Bulk Slash right now, I think these two have to get priority, just because they were the focus of this whole thing. Okay, so we got a cartridge. Holy crap. Okay, he did mention that there were some repros in here. I'm guessing this is one of them, but shit, this is a game I've always wanted. Uh, this is one of my most wanted uh, Super Nintendo games. We have Metal Warriors. Uh, and if you don't know Metal Warriors, you are missing out, but also you're probably most people because this game costs like hundreds and hundreds of dollars nowadays. Uh, the short version is Metal Warriors is a game published by Konami back when they weren't crap and their logo looked like two strips of bacon, but it was made by LucasArts if I recall. And uh, basically they saw the Assault Suit series, specifically Cybernator, and they said, oh, that's cute, we can do it better. And they did. Uh, basically, if you're not familiar with the Assault Suit series, it's a 2D side-scrolling, I guess, platforming run-and-gun thing with a mech. Uh, and Metal Warriors decided to take that in a different direction by letting you get out of the mech, interact with like bits of the environment to get around uh, obstacles, and then hop back in your mech to uh, do more mechy stuff. But they also included many, many different types of mechs, which all had different uses and stuff, which was very, very cool. And well, I've never played this game, and I've wanted to for so long. Uh, I have seen the sprite art for this game, because, uh, spoilers, I've been trying to work on, like, uh, channel art forever, and one of my early ideas was to combine a bunch of, like, sprites and stuff, and I saw the sprites from this game, and I wanted to use literally every single one of them. Just, it, it's got very, very tasty sprite work. This game is unbelievably cool. I am so excited that I have this. This is a big one off my list, for sure, for sure. All right, so we are on to the last one. Now this, I'm gonna assume, is something he hinted at to me that uh, he never really told me about. See, one of the earliest messages he had was that he had this like extra mech game that he wanted to make videos about, and he wanted to keep it a secret because he thought I'd like it, but I didn't know what it was, and I was, you know, because it's, it's a secret, I immediately wanted to know everything about it. Um, but he kept it a secret, and he included it, and he even said that he'd write some instructions, and there is a little note next to it, which seems to be, uh, special moves. And judging by this, it looks like some kind of fighting game. We have, according to the side of this, Gear Fighter Dendo, which, if we look at the back, looks kind of like a fighting game, a little bit. And, and I think I do enjoy me my max fighting and it's a PlayStation game, and it's a weird import, so God, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> you know, I, I'm immediately reminded of this completely obscure fighting game on the Dreamcast called Tech Romancer, which was like this 3D fighting game using mechs. Oh, this, this looks cool. It looks like it's got some like Sentai Power Ranger stuff going on too. I, I think he mentioned that one of the games in here sort of had connections with it. Uh, so maybe it was this one, I'm not sure, but uh, damn. <laughs> I, I don't know what this game is, this is a mystery to me, but judging by the, the screenshots in the back, it looks freaking cool. Uh, once again, huge shout outs and thanks to uh, good old Jetwolf 68 k I think I got that number right, I'm gonna feel bad if I don't. Alright, we should have one more game if the manifest is correct. Uh, I'm just getting a vague glance in the side, there's still more in here. Ooh, okay, this is definitely a repro, but <laughs> like this, this is definitely a game I've always wanted. Uh, this is Pocky and Rocky. 
Uh, this is a top-down, not quite twin stick because of course, you know, it's the Super Nintendo, but it's like a top-down sort of twin stick style shooter where you play as a Shrine Maiden and a Tanuki in the Japanese version. I think in the English version, he's like some kind of goblin and she's just some sort of girl. Uh, this series is actually very, very historied. I believe it started life on one of the obscure Japanese computers. I, I want to say MSX or like the 68K or whatever. Uh, as Kiki Kai Kai, I, I have that on one of the Taito Legends packs. And uh, this is a ridiculously good game. Uh, fun story, I have been trying to get this game forever for a video I wanted to make. Uh, it, it's a video that I don't think I'll ever actually make because it was like this whole video format I wanted to try out, but looking back on it, it, it might not work, so I probably wouldn't do something like that, but damn, I've been wanting to find a copy of this. And despite the fact this is actually a really, really huge series in Japan, we only got three games, and they're all really rare. You've got Pocky and Rocky, the sequel, Pocky and Rocky 2, on also on the Super Nintendo, and then there was one on the, I want to say Game Boy Advance, but it might have been Game Boy Color, called Pocky and Rocky with Becky, because they created a new character that I think in the Japanese version existed from the start, but they just never acknowledge her in the English version, so, yeah. But, holy crap, this this is an amazing birthday gift with like everything I've always wanted. This this is really damn cool. I am I am genuinely tearing up about how awesome this is. This is uh, this this is really really special. All right, so we got a few more things in here. Let's uh, let's grab it. Uh, so I want to point out the manifest was wrong. It said it had eight games. I think there's more than eight games in here. Uh, next we have. NES Classics, not to be confused with the little uh, Wii U compilation that was also actually really, really good. Uh, it seems to have 150 games, and it's a pirate multi-cart! I love pirate multi-carts, they're so cool. Actually, I've seen this cartridge, like, uh, making the rounds on eBay a whole bunch. Like, there's there's a few pirate multi-carts that show up quite frequently, and this is one of them. I've actually tried to buy this a few times, but I always end up talking myself out of it, so I don't actually have this. Uh, so I'm very excited to see what's on this. Like, it says it's got 150 games. Question is, is it five games repeated 30 times each? Or is it 150 actual games? And how many of those are pirate games? How many of them are actually, like, legit game games? I don't know, but, uh, I've actually been holding off until he sent this, because he did say there were going to be, like, some fake pirate stuff and, and like, some repros and stuff, and, you know, I, I'm thinking about getting back into my series about pirate gaming, but I wanted to hold off until I had this to add to the collection, just so that I could uh, put up the vote on the Discord for this, which I have got to send an invite to uh, Jet Wolf for sending this to the show, but uh, that's getting added to the pirate pile of uh, pirate cards we're going to look into. Alright, so next we have, ooh, okay, I've told this story before, I gotta tell it again. Um, let, let me set the stage. It was late August, probably 1997, 98, something like that. I, I was pretty young. I was like six or seven at the time. That was a long time ago. Wow. I remember it was a Friday night, and I had rented this game at my local video store, Bonus Video, and it was a game that looked really, really damn cool. I was excited to play it. And uh, I got home, slapped it in my Genesis, had an absolute blast with it. But it had like this art style I'd never seen before and I was absolutely floored by it. It was so cool. Okay, so a little after I'm playing, I see this ad on YTV, Youth Television. It, it's the Canadian's kid show, or at least was when I was a kid. It was a show that had sort of a similar art style. Again, never seen it before, but it looked so incredible and I had to see it. I, I bugged my parents to let me see it. And unfortunately, uh, because I was a kid and because my parents were ridiculous about my bedtime, I had to go to bed at like 6 p.m. Like, like no joke, my parents were ridiculous about my bedtime. When I was in high school, my bedtime was 9 and I had to fight for that. It was, it was embarrassing. But this show was on at 9.30 and bear in mind I'm like 6, 6, 7, something like that. I, I sneak out of bed, I turn on the TV, mute it, and I watch one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, a show that to this day has stuck with me, and that, combined with that game that I rented that day, was my intro in one day to all of anime, a medium that's basically essential to my life at this point, and that game was Shining Force. It was a strategy RPG series made by 
um, Camelot, the guys who would go on to make one of my favorite games of all time, and another Christmas, or another Christmas present, another birthday present of mine, Golden Sun. One of the best games I've ever played, and one of my earliest reviews, too. Uh, this this is really, really cool. This this is a huge part of my history, and I finally have a copy. I, I can't even begin to put words to how special this is, especially on top of all the rest of this. This is amazing. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna hit the, the camera because I'm just that damn excited. Okay, we got this. Uh, it, it's this. It's it's a gamester, whatever this is. Actually, oh. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. If, if you know what this is, let me know, but I think I have an idea what this is. Let me just, let me just, let me just. Yeah. This you slot a Game Boy Advance SP into, and you can swap between multiple games. And it actually increases like the size of your Game Boy Advance SP, so if you've got big hands, it actually has grips. This is an amazing little peripheral. I really need to get myself a Game Boy Advance SP like immediately now, but damn, this is a damn cool thing. Why have I never heard of this thing? This is amazing. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring stuff out. Okay, we're, we're getting, pretty much to the bottom of the box, but holy crap. Okay, another story about me. Uh, when I started this channel, I I'd recently discovered this amazing show from Japan called Game Center CX. The show was about this Japanese comedian who, and this will shock some of you because apparently I'm the worst ever according to the comments. Uh, it was about a comedian who was really, really, really bad at video games. Worse than me, me, I know. Uh, but, you know, the whole show was him trying to complete these games, and it was really cool and enduring, and I loved the show. Well, it came to North America once. Kotaku made a uh, DVD of it, and they made an absolute pig's breakfast of it, and most people don't talk about it, which is sad because it's hard to get a hold of it, and I'd love to get a copy. But uh, they also released a DS game, which was really, really damn good. It was like a... Uh, the the villain of the game was the main character from the show. It was the comedian Shinya Arno. He, he became this like crazy demon who sent him or he sent you back in time to talk to himself as a kid and help him through retro games. And he got to play like all sorts of things like this cool Dragon Quest clone and like this top down racer and like this really really badass Galaga clone. Well they made a couple other games too. And uh, unfortunately they never made it to North America but this happens to be the sequel of the second game in English. And it's important this is in English because the Japanese sequel unfortunately had some text adventures in it that might be hard to play in Japanese if you can't read the dialogue. Um, but I'm pretty excited to see this in English because uh, the English version of the original game, and I've got a piece of glitter on my hand for some reason, what's up with that? Uh, anyway, the, the Japanese version had so many shoutouts to the show itself, like they had the actual comedian like scream into uh, the speakers every single time you'd like crash or something in the game, like they had him constantly giving this goofy ass commentary. They kind of nixed it for the North American version to replace him with Yuri Lowenthal. And as much as I love to give Yuri shit for being in everything, he's very, very good at what he does. Unfortunately, they, as a shout out from the show, it was kind of lost. But for localization, I, I think that was a pragmatic choice that they had to make. What I disliked more is that in the game there was, because it's trying to emulate like the 80s, there's no internet or anything. If you want tips on games, you gotta get magazines. And the magazines had like a revolving set of editors that were all the actual like assistants from the show. And if you ever watched the show, you could recognize them. North American version nixed all that. So I'm hoping this one uh, doesn't do that because that made me kind of sad. There was also a third game, 3DS only, which means I can't play it because for some reason Nintendo decided, hey, after all these years of completely not having region-locked handhelds, we're gonna do that thing. And I'm sad because pretty much all the 3DS games I want are in fact region-locked. All right, we got one more thing, and this is something that if I saw it on eBay, I'd hate it with a passion. I see it here, it just makes me smile. We have a repro box for Hagane. My Hagane finally has a home, that's amazing. I hate these repro boxes so much on eBay because like if you look up anything, the first thing you find is like a million hits of these stupid boxes, but damn, I, I do need boxes for all my games and Hagane, that's a special one. So to have this, oh, that's very, very cool. This is going on my shelf. I'm actually remodeling all my rooms and I'm actually like moving my office and everything into this storage room right now, so I, I might not get to 
uh, working with my shelves or anything for a while yet, but uh, the first moment I get this, this is going on my shelves. This is really damn cool. And uh, yeah, this this whole thing. This was a. I, I'm not sure. I don't think it was an intentional birthday present from Jetwolf 68K. Again, shout outs. Go check his channel. Uh, huge thanks. I I can't even put into words how how special this is. Any support I get, again, it means the world to me. But uh, to get this, like. This is huge for me. There are so many games here I'm so excited to play. So many games I've been trying to get for the longest time. Freaking Bulk Slash. <laughs> like, just... Wow. I, I I cannot begin to express my gratitude to this as, as much as I possibly can. But uh, this, this alone has made this a very, very special, very cool birthday for me. And I don't have a lot of really good ones. My birthdays are kind of cursed. Uh, on six separate birthdays, I've almost died. <laughs> through random happenstance, um, but this this was a pretty good birthday and it's made me feel slightly less old. <laughs> but uh, once again, huge shout outs and thanks to Jetwolf68k for sending this to the show. Huge shout outs and thank you to anyone else who wants to support the show. Uh, I really appreciate it and you know, I encourage it because I, I need help. Please help me run my show a little bit better because it's expensive. But uh, once again, big thank you to Jetwolf. Uh, go check out his channel, subscribe to it, all that good stuff. Give him a big thanks from me and just, you know, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. This, this made my birthday very, very special and this is a very cool, very thoughtful box of awesome things. And I'm gonna do my best to get on uh, Ride Gear Guy Brave as fast as I possibly can. <laughs> as much as I desperately want to play Bulk Slash. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this unloot, unloot, unbox, loot video thing this box of mysteries that was sent to me by someone very, very thoughtful who was looking out for me that I really appreciate. And uh, if you did enjoy this, subscribe to the show to see more stuff. And uh, maybe check out my Twitch. You know, if you want to support my Patreon, I would really appreciate it. Please. Pretty please. <laughs> a anyway, I appreciate any support I get, and uh, this this was huge. Uh, once again, just big thank you to Jetwolf. And until the next video, Peace out, Internet.